Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So what I am going to uh, now do uh, is, to, is to tell you about uh, um, another important property uh, that comes because of the noetherianess okay. So uh, what I just explained in the previous lecture was that uh, the noetherianess of a topological space allows uh, uh, every non-empty closed subset to have a noetherian decomposition that is it can be broken down into a finite union of irreducible closed subsets non empty irreducible closed subsets and if you assume that this union is not uh, redundant that is no subset in the union is contained in some other subset in the union then this union uh, uh, this decomposition is unique the, that is the members of the union are unique okay. So and that is the reason why uh, any algebraic set any closed subset of uh, affine space for the Zariski topology can be written as a finite union of affine varieties. So this is one of the reasons why we call affine varieties as building blocks of uh, algebraic uh, sets and uh, uh, it is a general philosophy that affines are uh, build building blocks of algebraic uh, of structures in algebraic geometry and uh, uh, now I am going to give you another reason for the uh, for the importance of noetherianness okay so uh, that's got to do with that's got to do with dimension okay so uh, so the uh, so the you know the the aim is somehow to try to tell you uh, uh, the obvious thing that you will expect that you know the dimension of affine n space is n okay that's what uh, i'll try to explain but so what i uh, but what i want you to to begin with uh, not get confused with is the following See if you take affine space, uh, which is a n, uh, it's just as a as a set. It's just k n, okay. It's n copies of k, where k is an algebraically closed field, okay. And if you take k n uh, as a vector space over k, then it's very clear that it is uh, n-dimensional because it's a finite-dimensional vector space, and you know uh, uh, n copies of k as a uh, of a field uh, k will be dimension n as a vector space over that field okay because you can you for example you can always write down the standard basis okay uh, which consists of 1 in the ith place and zeros elsewhere right. So but therefore you know if you uh, think that uh, uh, I am trying to say that the dimension of k n over k as a vector space is n then you are mistaken because that is not what I am trying to say I am trying to define dimension in a completely different way I, I do not want to think of uh, k n uh, especially a n uh, fine n space I do not want to think of it as a vector space okay we are not here worried about the vector space properties okay we are worried about the topological properties. So the the uh, therefore what this calls for is how to define dimension of a topological space how to define dimension of topological space. So the answer to that is 
uh, the dimension can be defined by taking uh, uh, the largest uh, possible namely the supremum of lengths of strictly uh, you know decreasing chains of uh, 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 closed subsets ok. And uh, in, in an analogy you can compare it to the vector space situation ok. So, you know you take any vector any finite dimensional vector space over a field there if you look at subspaces of the vector space then you know the if the vector space is of dimension n then the largest strictly increasing or decreasing whichever way you want to see it uh, chain of proper subspaces will be of length n plus 1 because it will start from 0 if it is increasing it will start from the 0 subspace and will it will end with the full vector space and uh, at each stage uh, you will get uh, 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 a bigger subspace uh, with dimension 1 more ok. So, you start with 0 and you end with n so you will exactly get a chain of length n plus 1 of strictly increasing uh, subspaces and that is the maximum possible ok. So, uh, in the same way the analogy is that for a topological space you can define the dimension to be the supremum of uh, uh, the lengths of you know a strictly increasing chain of uh, irreducible closed subsets ok. And this leads to a very good definition uh, because it has got to do uh, in, in the case of affine space it has got to do with competitive algebra uh, namely with the polynomial ring. So, the in what way uh, I will explain now. So, let me make this definition. So, what is the uh, so the aim is to uh, so my so the aim of uh, this lecture at least the beginning is to uh, show that uh, the Noetherian condition is is very helpful to define uh, and show that the dimension topological dimension of affine n space is actually n ok and it will involve commutative algebra as you will see. So, so here is my definition uh, uh, for a topological space x we define dimension of x ok. So, this is called the topological dimension ok. Some people write dimension with a subscript T O P ok and sometimes we might uh, we might just omit it ok. So, whenever I write dimension of a topological space it is always topological dimension what is it this is to be this is defined as a supremum of uh, all n set of all n such that there exists a chain of irreducible closed subsets z not properly contained in z 1 properly contained in z 2 and so on up to z n. So, here is the so here is the <coughs> the definition of what Uh, dimension of a topological space means ok. So, you and mind you I am starting with uh, I am starting with z naught all right and uh, I assume that just to check that I am uh, on the right track uh, mm, I need to also say uh, that uh, all of uh, and I uh, perhaps I have to put the condition uh, I do not have to ok. So, z or z naught is already non empty because see I was just worrying whether I have to put the condition z naught is uh, non empty, but then I am saying that they are all irreducible closed sets and therefore they are already non, non empty ok. But mind you I am starting with 0 this is this is very very important starting with 0 ok. So, uh, now you see so you know you see what I want you to understand is that uh, 
this is uh, you let us let us examine this situation when x is uh, you know uh, uh, affine space okay so put take x equal to a n a n k k uh, algebraically closed field so you take k to be a, an algebraically closed field and look at affine n space over k okay then uh, you know that for the Zariski topology uh, the closed sets here they correspond to the irreducible closed subs su subsets here they correspond to prime ideals in the polynomial ring in n variables which is thought of as a ring of functions on the uh, on, on the affine space. So what uh, what will uh, what will this definition translate to here it will translate to the following dimension of a n a n k is equal to uh, the topological dimension is the supremum of all the n such that uh, there exists a chain of prime ideals p not so let me use script p p not uh, prop properly containing uh, p1 uh, i think i'll have to <coughs> uh, rather i have to number it the other way round p0 p1 pn okay so by this definition this is what you do you get okay you have a you have a chain of prime ideals okay and uh, it starts with uh, uh, p0 and goes up to pn and uh, uh, and you take the supremum over all n now the fact is that uh, so since you are looking at chains of prime ideals strictly increasing chains of prime ideals uh, what this relates to in commutative algebra is called as height of a prime ideal okay so let me recall what that is okay uh, if so so what is a commutative algebra involved let me explain that to you so what we do is uh, let r be a commutative ring with one okay uh, let p in r be a prime ideal let this be a prime ideal then what you do is uh, then we define height of p okay uh, height of p written as htp to be the supremum of all the n's such that there exists a chain of prime ideals uh, p not properly containing uh, p p not contained in p1 uh, properly con <coughs> contained in and so on to pn okay we define the height of a prime ideal like this all right and with of course with pn equal to p yeah right so uh, in other words you look at a chain of prime ideals which ends with p and you look at the largest possible such chain uh, of course they it need not be finite at all okay you may always find a chain like this for every uh, n it may it might happen so but if it uh, but it if it happen does not happen like that then you take uh, the supremum and that will be a finite number and call that the height of the prime ideal ok. 
okay. And uh, see here comes the uh, here comes the following fact. Uh, suppose uh, R equal to K of so let me write this f of x1 etcetera up to xm modulo j where f is a field and j is a prime ideal. Suppose r is a of this form now your question is whether this is an uh, ascending chain or whether it is a descending chain actually the truth is that uh, if I put it either way anyway I am going to get the same number ok whether I put it as uh, if I start with z0 and go up to zn and it is an ascending chain or if I start with z0 and zn it is and it is a descending chain anyway it is that n that I am worried about supremum of that n that, that I am worried about. So it really would not matter if I put uh, you know uh, the inclusion this way or the other way okay but there is a there is an issue when you come to the ring uh, and I will explain that now okay. So you see uh, we, we are assuming R to be of this form that it is a polynomial ring over a field modulo a prime ideal okay that means that R is an integral domain this implies that R is an integral domain okay. Then 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 uh, so now what you can do is you can look at uh, Q of R this is the uh, this is the quotient field of R or, or it is otherwise called as field of fractions of the integral domain R this is just the field of fractions of the integral domain R ok mind you this is a ring and you are going modulo of prime ideal a ring modulo of prime ideal is a domain okay and if you have an integral domain you can form the field of fractions just like you form rational numbers the field of rational numbers from the ring of integers which is an integral domain. So you take the field of fractions and then what you can do is that you can look at uh, 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 you can see that this will contain f okay clearly qr contains f because you see f is anyway uh, 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 contained in the polynomial ring as constant polynomials okay and you are uh, you are going modulo of prime ideal okay so in particular you are not going modulo everything okay so the fact is that uh, uh, you are certainly not since this uh, this is a proper ideal you are not certainly going modulo the elements of the field okay. So the elements of the field still uh, remain invertible in the field of fractions of R okay. You can see this for example in commutative algebra either by looking at the universal property of a uh, quotient field or you can use the universal property of uh, uh, localization for q of r is actually the localization of r at the 0 prime ideal which means you invert everything outside 0 okay you localize with respect to the multiplicative set which is the complement of 0 okay. So now the point is when you so, so in other words what you have now is you have an extension of this field you have the field f and you have this field extension. Now once you have an extension of a field uh, in field theory you can talk about things about talk about many things about the extension first of all you can ask whether it is algebraic if it is not algebraic you can uh, check if it is transcendental and if it is transcendental then you can uh, uh, define what is meant by transcendence degree okay. So, so let me quickly recall if you have a smaller field and you have a bigger field then we say that the bigger field is algebraic over the smaller field if every element in the bigger field is obtained uh, 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 as a zero of a polynomial uh, of a polynomial coefficients in the smaller field okay and if there is an element which 
is not the zero of an element of, of any polynomial in the smaller field then that element is called a transcendental element for example if you take real numbers over rational numbers okay then uh, the number e uh, which is used when in defining the exponential function or the number pi uh, which is used in, trigono in trigonometry okay they are all transcendental though of course the proofs of these facts are not so easy e and pi are transcendental numbers and they are transcendental numbers because you cannot find them as roots of a an, an equation uh, in one variable polynomial equation in one variable with uh, uh, rational coefficients which is the same as looking at uh, uh, with integer coefficients okay because you can always clear denominators. So the moral of the story is that uh, you do have fields which have uh, uh, transcendental elements so R uh, the field of real numbers uh, is transcendental uh, as a field extension over the field of rational numbers and once you have uh, transcendental elements what you can do is you can actually uh, uh, define you know uh, what is called as a transcendental uh, version of dimension okay. So what you can do is uh, you can mimic what you do for uh, 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 a vector space situation see in a vector space situation what you do is uh, how do you define the dimension of vector space the dimension of vector space is defined as the maximal number of linearly independent vectors okay. So in other words what you do is you take uh, uh, the uh, maximal subset of vectors which are linearly independent and take uh, its cardinality and call that cardinality as the dimension of your vector space. So the, the dimension of the vector space is just the cardinality of a maximal set of linearly independent vectors okay. Now you just mimic this in, in, in algebra and what you do is instead of linear independence uh, which is used in the situation of vector spaces you now use algebraic independence which is the analog that you use in algebra in ring theory okay. So what you do is if you have a bigger field containing a smaller field okay and suppose the bigger field has some elements which are transcendental over the smaller field namely if it has elements which are not zeros of polynomials with coefficients of any polynomials with coefficients uh, a polynomials in one variable with coefficients in the smaller field then you can start looking at a uh, you can start looking at a collection of transcendental elements okay but put the condition that uh, also put the condition that this collection of transcendental elements is algebraically independent okay. So you know a collection of elements finitely many elements in a bigger field is said to be algebraically independent over the smaller field if this if these elements okay they do not satisfy a polynomial in several in as many variables uh, uh, with coefficients in the smaller field okay. So please try to understand when you do it for a vector space you will say that uh, a, a bunch of vectors finitely many vectors are linearly independent if they do not satisfy a linear polynomial in as many variables with coefficients in the base field. Now what you are doing is instead of requiring a linear polynomial in so many variables okay as many variables as the number of elements you are looking at you are only uh, saying that now you also assume that you cannot find uh, uh, a polynomial relation you are only saying so let me repeat that if you have finitely many elements of a bigger field we say the finitely many elements of the bigger field is uh, they are algebraically independent if they cannot if they, they are not uh, they do not have any polynomial relation between them with coefficients in the smaller field in other words they are not zero of a polynomial in as many variables with coefficients in the smaller field such a subset of elements is called an algebraically independent subset of elements okay. Now what you do is just like in the vector space situation you took a maximal linearly independent set and took its cardinality and called it the 
dimension you do the same thing here what you do you do the analogous thing here what you do is you take a maximal set of transcendental elements which are algebraically independent okay take a maximal set of algebraically independent elements and take its cardinality and call that as the transcendent transcendence degree of the bigger field over the smaller field okay so the transcendence degree of the bigger field over the smaller field is the is a is the cardinality of the large maximal number uh, is a cardinality of a maximal set of algebraically independent elements just like in the case of a vector space uh, the dimension of a vector space over the base field is the cardinality of a maximal linearly independent set of vectors the same way the dimension the transcendence degree of a bigger field over a smaller field is the cardinality of an algeb a maximal algebraically independent subset of elements of the bigger field which are algebraically independent over the smaller field okay that is called transcendence degree it just mimics what we did for dimension in the linear case okay the vector space case. So the beautiful theorem is that if you calculate the transcendence degree of q of r over f that turns out to be what is the cruel dimension of r okay and the cruel dimension of r is supposed to be the uh, supremum of the heights of its prime ideals okay so so let me so let me write that uh, so here uh, so uh, so maybe okay so let me let me let me do so th th quite a few things that i have mentioned but you can kind of uh, try to at least understand them uh, heuristically now and then do further reading so uh, define uh, for any commutative ring R with one cruel dimension of R to be equal to the supremum of height of P that P in R is prime. call this the call this the cruel dimension and uh, the 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 notation for that is dimension cruel r okay then here is a theorem so it is a theorem from commutative algebra and field theory which says the following if r is equal to f of x1 etc up to xm modulo j where j is a prime ideal then uh, transcendence degree of quotient field of r over f is equal to the cruel dimension So, uh, please understand this theorem. It's a, it's 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 a very basic and, of course, a very important result. What it does is, it tells you what the cruel dimension of an integral domain, which is a finitely generated algebra over a field, measures. It actually measures the number of algebraically independent elements in the fraction field of the integral domain over the base field okay so this is a uh, so you know in in some sense uh, this side is analogous to what you do in linear algebra when you have a vector space over a field then the dimension of the vector space over the field is the cardinality of a maximal linearly independent subset of vectors which are linearly independent over the base field in the same way when you have a 
field extension of a field then the transcendence degree of the field extension over the smaller field is the cardinality of a maximal set of linear uh, of algebraically independent elements here over which are algebraically independent over the base field okay and in the case of linear independence the condition is that uh, those elements uh, uh, the those finitely many elements do not satisfy a linear polynomial in as many variables with coefficients in the base field and in the case of algebraic independence the condition is that those finitely many elements do not satisfy a polynomial of higher degree in as many variables with coefficients in the base field that is the analogy okay and that these two are equal is the theorem is the theorem from competitive algebra okay. I need also another I need also another theorem uh, and I think this stating this theorem will uh, in retrospect uh, check whether I have uh, muddled with uh, the inclusions in, in this definition or in this definition okay. So, so what is the theorem so the what this theorem says is that this theorem actually uh, you know connects the uh, height of the ideal with the dimension of the quotient okay. So the theorem is uh, uh, so uh, with r as above uh, that is r is a polynomial ring in finitely many variables over a field modulo prime ideal okay. Uh, height of j plus dimension cruel dimension of r is equal to the cruel dimension of this yeah so what I want to basically say is that if you are looking at uh, uh, if you are looking at uh, the if you are looking at j equal to 0 okay if you are looking at j equal to 0 and you look at height of the 0 prime ideal then the height of the 0 prime ideal is, is just 0 okay because I can start with 0 and I have to uh, and that is it I cannot make it any larger. So the height the height of a 0 of the 0 prime is just 0 okay plus uh, the cruel dimension of r will just give me again the cruel dimension of r because r in this case if I put j equal to 0 then r is actually f of x1 etc up to xm and the cruel dimension uh, so of course if I put j equal to 0 uh, I will get uh, I, I do not get anything but the point is that the cruel dimension of this is actually m because the cruel dimension of a ring is actually the transcendence degree of the uh, of the quotient field of that ring over uh, uh, the, the quotient field of that integral domain over the base field. So if you take a polynomial ring in m variables and look at its quotient field you will get the field of quotients in n variables okay. So the quotient field of this will be f round bracket x1 through x. This is the set of all uh, uh, quotients of polynomials in m variables with of course the denominator being non zero and as you can as you can easily see you have to check that uh, there are this uh, if you take the quotient field of this the number of uh, linearly uh, I mean algebraically independent variables will be m it will be these x1 through xm okay you cannot have more than m uh, algebraically independent elements over f okay. So what this will tell you is uh, 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 probably I do not need this now maybe I will need it later uh, when I look at the general case of an affine variety but for the moment what you get immediately from all this is that the dimension of uh, uh, the your, your affine space okay the dimension of your affine space will be uh, by definition it will be the supremum of all these things okay and you can see that this is the same as the cruel dimension uh, of the of the uh, of the ring uh, of polynomial functions on the affine space which is equal to uh, which is equal to n okay. So what I wanted to understand uh, probably I do not need this now uh, this so so maybe I will do the following thing for the moment let me uh, uh, 
so let me uh, so let me not let us not worry about this okay let us not worry about this this is not uh, immediately relevant for the discussion but we are this is what is important put uh, uh, r equal to k x1 etc out to xn we get uh, uh, dimension topological dimension of an is equal to dimension krull of uh, k x1 etc xn which is by definition equal to I mean which is by this theorem equal to the transcendence degree over k of the quotient field of k x1 etc xn and that is of course equal to transcendence degree over k of q of x1 etc xn this is the notation for the uh, quotient field of uh, sorry uh, k round bracket x1 through xn is the quotient field of k square bracket x1 through xn and k round bracket x1 through xn con consists of ratios of polynomials uh, from this ring polynomials in these n variables with of course the denominator polynomial being non zero okay and that is th this is equal to n the transcendence degree of this is n okay that's again a fact uh, that we will we will we'll accept from field theory or uh, uh, from computer algebra uh, that polynomial ring uh, what you have done to the polynomial ring is uh, what you have done uh, in constructing this polynomial ring is that you started with the field k and you have added n indeterminates and these n elements are algebraically independent by definition because any uh, no try to understand that if you look at x1 through xn they are elements of uh, this ring and this ring sits inside its quotient field so they, they are also elements of the of this quotient field you can think of each xi as xi by 1 divided by 1 just as you think of an integer as a rational number uh, given by the integer divided by 1 okay and therefore these xi's are all elements here okay and the fact that they are all algebraically independent is the fact that if you write a polynomial in the xi's with coefficients from k and if it is equated to 0 then all the coefficients have to be 0 that is what it means to say that the xi's are uh, you know indeterminates the fact that xi's are indeterminate says that they are transcendental over k and any polynomial relation amongst them is 0 if and only if all the coefficients are 0 okay that is in other words they are all algebraically independent. So it is very clear that xn x1 through xn are algebraically independent and therefore the transcendence degree has to be at least n and then you if you do some field theory you can check that the transcendence degree is exactly n. So by this definition you will get that the dimension of a n the topological dimension of a n is the same as the cruel dimension of this ring and that is equal to n okay. Now uh, I will let me come back to uh, let me come back to this uh, uh, this statement here and that has got to do with uh, trying to trying to do it to all this dimension count uh, even for an affine variety okay so le let me do this for any affine variety and use this so you see suppose uh, uh, y inside a n is an affine variety suppose y inside a n is an affine variety okay so uh, y is an irreducible closed subset and uh, and of course uh, y is well zero set of the ideal of y with with of course ideal of y a prime ideal in the polynomial ring now you see 
so what i want to say is that uh, a statement similar to this also can be made what for for affine varieties so what's happening here is <coughs> the topological dimension of affine space is the trans is the, is the cruel dimension of the ring of functions on affine space see that's what the first statement states says the topological dimension of affine space with respect to zariski topology is the cruel dimension of the ring of functions on the affine space and the ring and the cruel dimension of the ring of functions on the affine space is the transcendence degree of its quotient field over the base field okay which is essentially this theorem okay a similar statement holds for uh, any irreducible closed subset so what will be what do you expect the theorem to be the theorem the the, the fact will be that if you take the topological dimension of y okay notice that y is a subset of affine space and affine space has a zariski topology so y has also the induced topology and in fact uh, uh, y is itself a closed subset so therefore uh, any closed subset the closed subsets of y are precisely the closed subsets of affine space which are contained in y so there is no difference okay and so y ha if if you take the zariski topology induced on y and you look at the topological dimension of that that will turn out to be equal to the dimension the cruel dimension of the ring of functions on y see look at this statement the topological dimension of the space is the cruel dimension of the ring of functions on the space and the ring of functions on the space is the all the polynomials so here i should write ring of functions on uh, on y okay but what is the ring of functions on y the ring of functions on y to get the ring of functions on y you will of course uh, all polynomials which are functions on the whole affine space are also going to be functions on y because after all you take a polynomial i can evaluate it on affine space i can also avail evaluate it on a subset of the affine space so i can take all those polynomials and restrict it to y but the point is two such polynomials two different polynomials there may still define the same function on y that's because their difference may be a function which vanishes on y what this tells you is that the functions on y are the same as the functions here on affine space up to uh, translation by elements of the ideal i y in other words what you are doing is you are looking at cosets of i y in the polynomial ring which means you are actually looking at the quotient ring so the moral of the story is that the ring of functions on y has to be uh, the ring of functions on the bigger space which is affine space modulo the ideal of y okay so so this so this is uh, the cruel dimension of the ring of functions on the affine space which is the bigger space k x1 etc xn modulo the ideal of y okay notice that the ideal of y is prime okay and the ideal of y is prime and uh, uh, therefore this quotient is an integral domain okay and we are in this we are in the situation of this theorem you are having a polynomial ring over a field you are going modulo a prime ideal uh, and then the cruel dimension is actually the transcendence degree of the quotient field of the uh, of the of the of the integral domain over the base field so if you use that theorem you will get that this is transcendence degree so uh, <coughs> this is by definition transcendence degree uh, 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 yeah <coughs> but 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 before i do that let me use this theorem okay let me use this theorem all right so what this theorem will tell you is that it is the cruel dimension of r is the cruel dimension of the bigger ring minus the height of the ideal by which you are going to get r so this will tell you that this will be 
uh, just n minus height of the ideal of y and of course this will be equal to uh, transcendence degree of the over k of the quotient field of uh, this quotient ring k x 1 which is an integral domain ok. So, uh, so the moral of the story is that <coughs> you can calculate dimensions for uh, you, you you have a formula for dimensions for affine uh, close affine sub varieties of affine space ok. So, as an example uh, you can look at uh, y equal to uh, say z of x 1 ok uh, or more, more generally suppose I take the ideal generated by x 1 through x r. <coughs> where uh, inside affine space where r is less than or equal to n ok. Then you can see that uh, so then dimension of y as a topological space is by definition going to be n minus height ideal of y ok and uh, the fact is that uh, the uh, the ideal see the ideal of y is just ideal of z of x1 etc up to xr okay and you know if you take i of z of some ideal you get its radical which is uh, you know one of the important uh, consequences of the null cell size so what you'll get here is the radical of x1 through xr and you can check that it is its own radical that's because it's prime <coughs> why is it prime because if you take the polynomial ring modulo this ideal you will get the polynomial ring in the other variables that's a very easy check and since when you go go modulo this you get a polynomial ring in some variables which is an integral domain this has to be prime and since this is prime it is already radical ok. So, you will get this and therefore uh, and you know if you take height of i y you will get r ok because you are going to uh, look at uh, a maximal chain like this uh, which uh, starts with something smaller and goes up to the ideal and you know uh, uh, you can see that uh, 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 since uh, the maximal the maximal chain maximal chain of primes will be uh, for example like 0 properly contained in x1 properly contained in x1 comma x2 properly contained in and so on x1 through xr ok. So, you will see that the height is r ok and but I am saying for example because one has to prove it ok. The fact that you have a chain like this tells you that the height of this ideal is at least r ok because height is supposed to be supreme the fact is that you cannot get a chain of bigger length that is a fact that needs to be proved ok. But if you assume that you you can uh, uh, you can if, if you believe that then height of i y is r and you will get di dimension of the topological dimension of y is equal to n minus r ok and this this is uh, so in so in other words what you are saying is the topological dimension of uh, the 0 set of x1 through uh, 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 xr is n minus r of course you know if I put n equal to r then uh, 
x1 through xn will be a maximal ideal that will correspond to the origin so the zero set will be a single point and the dimension will become zero n minus n the point will have zero dimension okay so this is a so what this demonstrates to you is that you get uh, you get the most natural thing namely if you go uh, if you take uh, if you cut down by r equations then your uh, uh, dimension also cuts down by that many equations roughly this is what is happening but then it is technical to check that uh, that you know this uh, the height of this is exactly r okay but what I am trying to demonstrate to you is so of course here I am I have used this 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 result I mean this this allows you to do dimension calculations for sub varieties of uh, affine space close sub varieties of affine space and here is a standard example. So the uh, when you take z of x1 through xr you are taking uh, uh, the uh, locus given by uh, the intersection of all the hyper surfaces when you take 0 set of any xi you are looking at the equation xi equal to 0 that is called a hyper surface <coughs> because it is cutting by one equation and now what you are doing is now you are successively cutting by r of these equations and obviously you should expect the dimensions should also go down by r and that is exactly what this computation says and the fact is that uh, this is exactly what you would expect this is exactly what happens but the commutative algebra that intervenes is locked in these two uh, theorems uh, is captured by these two theorems and that involves the definition of transcendence degree it involves the definition of cruel dimension and it on which in turn uh, uh, depends on the dimension of I mean the definition of height of a prime ideal okay. So these are the I mean this is the commutative algebra that comes in. So uh, see so the moral of the story is the following the moral of the story is that if I uh, if I dry draw a diagram with uh, you know so maybe maybe I can do that if I draw a diagram with uh, uh, if I draw a diagram with the geometric side here and the commutative algebraic side here side here if I start with a n okay then what you go to is k of x1 etc up to xn which is the ring of functions on a n. So now you see uh, uh, now this dictionary that I am what I am writing down is not what I uh, is different from what I wrote down earlier. Earlier I was looking at subsets of a n say closed subsets of a n here and I was looking at ideals here okay but I am not doing that now I what I am doing is I am I am defining a uh, a relation uh, a function which to every set gives its set of functions so this is this is a of so th this is a symbol standard symbol so a of a and k is the set of functions on on a n if you give me uh, uh, z affine variety z of p affine variety affine sub variety which is a closed subset irreducible closed subset of a n okay then and if you apply this a you will get a of z of t is just k of x1 through xn mod p the the uh, the affine the ring of functions on an affine variety is just the quotient of ring of functions ambient space modulo the prime ideal whose zeros define that particular irreducible closed subset. So this can also be written as a of a n by uh, i of z of p if you want okay. So you see now you get a picture the picture is here on this side you have the affine variety a n 
mind you a in itself is an affine variety because it is an irre irreducible uh, <coughs> closed subset okay and you have its irreducible closed subsets which are proper affine varieties and there are the corresponding rings of functions. So the moral of the story is uh, that we have this correspondence between space the, the geometric spaces on this side and the rings of functions. So uh, the in, 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 in all of algebraic geometry the point is that everything that is geometric here gets translated into commutative algebra and vice versa okay. So here is so for example the topological dimension on this side is the cruel dimension on the other side that is what the theorem says okay. So the notion of topological dimension here corresponds to the notion of cruel dimension there that is the that is the translation okay that is what you must understand okay. So I will stop here.